Dear chairpersons, I would like to thank PHG, Dr. Ritul and other group members of this organization and also the excellent speaking I was listening to. It so happened I had to listen for one hour <laughs> the talk by the other people. Wonderful speaker, wonderful talk, wonderful talk. Now let me see here, I am going to speak on a latest concept, not latest, my own concept, how to go about, that is why I call Heart of the Matter 2020. What is that heart? <coughs> Before going to that, this is what my topic will be, a step towards premortal prevention of diabetes. So this is a, this is a new concept, the step towards premortal diabetes. The estimation of wrong, estimations and projections of the number of people 20 to 70 years with diabetes in different editions of millions that are just giving the prelude here to 19, 463 million is going to be 537 in 2021 and 2045 is going to be 783. So it's almost doubled by the time to 2045. And, and that means the pre-diabetes approximately 318 million, which is likely to increase to about 481 million by 2040. So friends, diabetes is the epidemic of an unprecedented magnitude. Now it's going to be a pandemic. So this is a prelude I'm going to give. That means we are going to face the world. It's going to face a huge population of diabetes, including India. So now I want to introduce the topic here. Most of the people screen for diabetes in the towns, villages, everywhere. That is called, that's only detection of diabetes. It does not mean prevention of diabetes. What I am going to concentrate is prevention of diabetes, how to do it, how to, how to approach this particular topic. So now our aim is primordial prevention of diabetes. Somebody asked what is a primordial disease that is, disease should not develop. What steps can be taken for primordial prevention of diabetes? Let me see in the data. Now the evidence here, best evidence I can give from only from states. Diabetes prevention program in the United States in September 2001, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC issued a press release stating that between epidemics of diabetes and obesity continue to threaten the health of Americans. Not only Americans, all over the world is a problem. And diabetes prevention program was introduced. They did a proper method. What happened was surprising here. In 2001, it was 6.1% of the US population had diagnosed diabetes. Currently, 2021, it is 10.5 Americans developed. So, whatever method they use seems to be not working here, working, and so it has become doubled. So, this, though, though we all think about CDS is an excellent center, but here they fail here. So, obviously, this is not a successful program of the United States. Then let, let us think what we can do. Then what could be the successful program which you are, which are, which you are thinking about? Now, I think I am a positive fellow. I think, is it is it possible to achieve diabetes for a generation? Is, is it possible? Yes. Whom to focus? Having designated this free generation, whom to focus to see that diabetes doesn't occur in the world? That is more personal diabetes. Any interesting finding here, long time ago, Lice Kingo told female gender is key for diabetes prevention. So now I think most of you have understood what I am trying to focus. Female gender is the key for diabetes prevention. How she is responsible? Now, development origin of any disease will be here. The ovum is well supplied, the mitochondria, the sperm contains a few. Even those few do not persist in the offering. The state makes it very clear that mother is very, very important because the whole thing comes from the ovum. Sperm doesn't do much. So here you see here, at fertilization, it's only the nucleus of the protozoa. It enters the ovum. And thus all the cytoplasm, mitochondria, and the mitochondrial DNA are exclusively maternally inherited. 
So this from this particular point, we are we are we can come to a conclusion. The female gender is more important for us for prevention of diabetes. Now, David Barker, a wonderful study he made. He said the body is susceptible to lifestyle disease was pogram intrauterine. Now he is giving the answer intrauterine pogram. What do you mean by that? It will be here. What is intrauterine? The gestational program is a process whereby stimuli, metal fuels, or stresses occur at critical sensitive periods of fetal development, permanently change structure, physiology, and metabolism, which predispose individuals to disease and adult life. So, this he has concluded saying that the fetal origin of adult diseases. So, now we have come to conclusion that female gender is very important and most important will be fetal origin of a disease. That means fetal is most important from where you develop all the diseases. Now we will see how it, how it is possible. Now, here as some people are telling about genetics. Now this is true. Development origin of health and diseases, phenotype has to be there. You may have genes from the parents may get diabetes, no doubt about that. Any disease can develop from genes. Now what happens here, it can be again intrauterine will be here, fetal development. And then after the child is born, it is called post natal development, environment, both are called epigenetics. Now, how far we can give importance to genes or to epigenetics? Now, we will look at this, what has happened here. Due to a statement, genetic loads the gun. You may have a gun, but nothing will happen unless you fire it off. Genetic loads the gun and the environment triggers it off. What is the environment is the important, that is what we call in this epigenetic and that most important will be the intra uterine environment. Now, what is the clue for this? I want to answer for this. If you take diabetes mellitus, is it genetic or it is epigenetic? Inherited destiny is genetic or it could be intra uterine environment, which is more important, genetic or intra uterine environment. I will show the exam evidence here. If you take animal experiment model, for Mr. Rat, the low genetic risk, very important slide. Mr. Rat with low genetic risk of diabetes when exposed to hyperglycemia media of go to rat utero significantly increase the risk of diabetes and other life. So, Mr. Rat is not genetic risk, whereas when it, is, when it transferred into the go to rat utero, that, that will develop diabetes. That shows uterine, intrauterine media is very important. The animal. Now, what about human being? So, maternal hyperglycemia and progeny, the offspring of female Indians who were neutral, their mother had diabetes, have a greater risk of diabetes than early siblings born before the mother developed diabetes. So, both animal experiment and the human has showed the intraverse exposure is more important in transmitting the disease to the infant, that is called epigenetic. So, here if we compare both. Intraterrestrial milieu or it is their destiny, intraterrestrial milieu seems to be very, very important in the transmission of disease, diabetes. Now, why you are concerned about the lots of times they are picking, picking, Utrell has given a number of talks talk were given, why you are concerned about GDM? We take like this, this is a very beautiful statement, as Asli Mora Ferrari said, gestational diabetes mellitus may play a crucial role the increasing prevalence of diabetes and obesity. And again, if we continue that, insulin resistance, increased energetic lipid profile, inflammatory markers, hypertension, endothelial dysfunction lead to increased risk of for GCV, cardiac disease. So that is how now we are discussing GDM because of these reasons now. That is what that's why I call them as a GDM is the mother of non communicable diseases. So it is obviously now we know we have to take care of the woman who is going to develop, we want to prevent GDM so that the child will not become diabetic. How is it possible? Now, friends, detection that is diagnosis of GDM is possible. It is very simple. In Dipsy guidelines is there, any guidelines you take and diagnosis is possible. What I am interested, what I would like to share with you here is what we are concerned is the prediction of GDM. You can diagnose detection is not that difficult. Now, what we are concerned is the prediction who is going to become JDM. That is the most important part of my talk. How, how it is prediction is possible? 
then so what we can do prevent diabetes development of genetic and its consequences so that once you know the how to predict the GDM so you can definitely go with prevention so prediction and prevention go together so we will see in the next slide when to test glucose level to predict GDM when to test that is very important here now fortunately there are some study came in the in, in, in to my knowledge the blood test may identify gestational diabetes risk in first trimester he just made a very very broad classification of first trimester the number of weeks are there first trimester where where do you get the blood test to be done now let's say which week we should do the test now we'll see here gestational weeks for prediction of gdm which week we'll get the gdm prediction we can say okay this lady is going to gdm now we have had almost one hour of discussing we listening to all the talk now i'm going to say which week prediction of gdm can be occur so it is a beautiful statement here all of you will be able to understand this a blood test conducted as early as the 10th week of pregnancy may help identify women at risk of gestational diabetes mellitus so we are, we are all talking about 24 28 we now will see here a blood test and the early as a 10th week of pregnancy may help so what should be the criteria there 10th week it very classic uh, will be here at higher aoc level an average of 5.3 percent or 111 milligram per deciliter compared to those without gdm an average of aoc 5.1 so either you can do the aoc 5.3 or it could be a postnatal blood sugar ppbs will be 110 milligram so that is the glycemic level 10th week glycemic level 110 that's two part in this number this this is the study now what is the significance of 10th week i told in previous slide 10th week what is the significance of 10th week of pregnancy it's a very important message i could share with you now here each islet cell functions as an endocrine organ very important and then the human pancreas begins to develop four weeks after the conception and first insulin deposits can be found but in week 7 and 8 pancreatic islet cell differentiates 10th and 11th week of gestation out of that 10th week is very important it recognizes and responds to metal glycemia at 11th week of gestation there are two points here one 10th week is a, where you can abnormality of course around 10 mg the child the mother will develop a gdm in future why because the moment 10th week blood sugar cross around 10 mg 11th week the fetus will start transcribing insulin So the evidence was 10th week and then 11th week. This, this particular point is very very important because the embryology here. Now we will see in next slide will be prandial glycemic level that can be considered as abnormal. Now I tell a different concept I am going to give to you here. The, what is the prandial glycemic level that can be considered as abnormal? So if you take a, this wonderful study, this Erman does, he says normal pattern of glycemia non pregnancy will be here fasting blood sugar will be 71 plus or minus 8 and true will be less than 10 so anything above this is abnormal this is what any value above normal is abnormal so this is this is particular part is taken for whole study now we are going to discuss now now prediction of gdm as i have told you detection of gdm is possible now which which value predicts the first time national institute of health study in 2018 suggested a1c of 5.3 or two or post prandial blood glucose more than 10 mg at tanthing predict gdm i give an answer now i mean no prediction how to prevent now next slide next point will be here but so far dear friends no explanation has been given for prediction or as well as prevention of gdm nobody knows how to predict how to prevent only thing we know will be tant we can predict gdm then in other we know but how to go about is another another big big question let me see how i can answer this, this particular problem now we conceptualize otherwise we envisage the maternal this this slide again very important maternal to our personal blood sugar pbs should not cross 110 mg at 10th week 
as fetal bitter cell starts getting insulin around 11th week of pregnancy. That is the crux of the problem. 10th week and 11th week both are very important. 10th week more than 10 is indicates the prediction. If we continue, if we don't treat that 110 milligram, the child, the fetus will start responding to the metal blood sugar or by 11th week and starts start getting insulin. So, this is a very important scientific data fetal handling of metal glucose, which, which we, have, we know about that, but now this is what I am going to have as a point to argue how we can predict and prevent GDM. If we prevent GDM, we can prevent diabetes also. So fetal handling of metal glucose. I told you 10th week fetus will be there, fetus will start functioning, 11th week will segregate. Now that is what fetal, and how does fetal handling see? Metal glucose is very surprising. Here you see here, fetal handling of metal glucose. When metal PPBS more than 100 milligrams, this figure please remember the 100 milligrams, the recorded in early weeks of pregnancy is advisable to take immediate step to bring PPBS less than 10 milligrams, less she will develop GDM and consequences. So this is, this is the final message here. So having known that, the obvious implication is that Glycemic control needs to be optimized very early in pregnancy to prevent the establishment of fetal hyperglycemia. So, metal hyperglycemia and fetal hyperglycemia are a king pain of the problem here. Now, contribution of glucose gradient from the mother to the fetus, in this slide is very again important uh, slide here. You take a maternal glucose, M maternal, F is fetal, maternal glucose increases. More than 110 milligram, what could happen would be it immediately the metal hyperglycemia pushes glucose to the fetal compartment. What does fetal does? Fetal insulin and fetal hyperglycemia pulls glucose from the mother. So this this is very important message here. Metal glucose is there. The fetus inside the mother's womb is there. What happens here? Metal hyperglycemia pushes glucose to the fetal compartment. Not only that, fetus also supports the mother but fetal hyperglycemia pulls the glucose inside. So glucose goes to the fetal in the fetus, fetus secretes more of insulin and again goes to adiposity. That is what happens. The fetal glucose steal across the placenta to the fetus. This is, the, this is what is the most important what is changes that occurs in the pregnancy. Now, I will make it a simple understanding here, summing up. Guidelines to screen glucose tolerance at appropriate gestation week. How to appropriate week is very important here. Suppose we take a woman, example, 10th week, now they go on testing the glucose these weeks here. If when you know, normally most of us know after 22nd trimester, insulin resistance starts due to hormonal changes. Tumor necrosis fat alpha, hyperplasin lactogen, but just all these hormones changes will affect the fetal the, the mother and insulin resistance and she will develop GDM. We are not worried about that. Now what happens here, if we take the usual recommendation for screening will be 24th to 28th. Keep this away in our mind. Now we will come to point here, 10th week, I told you earlier, if PPBS more than 100 milligrams, if you go, suppose you test at 10th week, if it goes more than 110 milligrams, the, the, that child, that fetus at 11th week will secrete insulin. Fetal plus secreting and start secreting insulin. Then what we are doing nowadays will be none of us are treating presently recommendation to test for the glucose tolerance to a 10th week is not for at all. Nobody follows because nobody knows about what's happening. This is a concept now I am sharing with you. All the books will say 24th and 28th week. Now probably of late, most of the test weeks is first trimester. Now even then, still it has to be 10th week is, you know, is not followed. So what could be the consequences here is maternal hyperglycemia and fetal hyperglycemia. I, I hope this slide is clear. Fetal, maternal hyperglycemia, 110, fetal, fetal hyperglycemia, 10th week is not followed. So hence, maternal hyperglycemia and fetal hyperglycemia promote Fetal adiposity resulting in the offsprings will be here. The child born to the mother will be, if you have a male child, you will be obesity, but IGT and diabetes, 
We've got a female child, obesity, GDM and diabetes. This vision cycle continues. That is all. What's, that is how the diabetes starts from Tantric itself starts. Now it was 24-3. You don't know. The first time I'm sharing with you, Tantric itself, the predictions can be made that that lady is going to become GDM. So, since having discussed that, now if it, if, as I have told you, with tenth week, if it's more than ten milligram, you are not going to save that woman. Not she will definitely become GDM. So how to prevent of under ten milligram at tenth week? So we must have the what do you call early action you must take. Ideal is to test for growth starters at eighth week itself. That's two months, two months itself. So tenth week, too late because next week she is going fetal insulin. So we must see that with tenth week. Blood sugar doesn't come to an unattended level, so that is why we must do two months. So I will again repeat here: prediction of GDM is two or PPVS more than unattended milligram at tenth week. Prediction. That's that's all of us now would have followed. Now what happens here is at, at eighth week itself, PP blood sugar estimate. That is means an example. Suppose you are preparing for examination, you must prepare at least two to three months earlier, not one week before the examination. On the day of exam, the reading is going. So you must have some time. You must give it. So else, at eighth week itself, PP base has to be estimated. Because if you do that, because in case of PP base is more than 100 milligrams, when you test at eighth week, it's more than 10. A grace period of two weeks available to attain PP base less than 100 milligrams at tenth week. So the I will give an answer here. So, an important statement here. In case the PBB is more than 100 milligrams to 8th week, 10th week, if you go, it is too late. I will tell you again in the following slide. So, a grace period of 2 weeks available to attain PBB is less than 100 milligrams by 10th week. So, now we will understand in this slide will be example here. Now, weeks PBB is 8th week. Suppose as a grace period, earlier you will do the test, 8th week. 10th week testing is not not useful. So 8th week 110 mg. So intervention with MNT or metformin. 10th week it comes to less than 10 because you already interfered here. 110. So now this grace period two weeks available. So you are able to treat that pregnant woman bring down less than 110 mg. So 11th week what will be the same again continue to be like that. Once the interfered given metformin. No increase in fetal impetus cell disease occurs because it is less than 10 in the town 3. That is what happens if we start intervention in the 8th week itself. Suppose if we do the test for 10th week. Tenth week. What will happen? We already do the correct thing, we have done it, but the pressure will be and then 10 milligrams of blood sugar will be 10th week, 11th week what will happen? You won't enough time is available to achieve less than 10 milligrams. So a simple change of within two weeks what could happen? Saving the parent mother became GDM, you are going to push that into becoming a GDM because not enough time available to achieve less than 10 milligrams. So what would happen here will be fetal beta cells cycle starts increasing. Once it starts secreting insulin it will never come back. So this is the vicious cycle of metal blood sugar and fetal insulin. <clears throat> what we should do here, then this is what I am suggesting. This is called less than 8th week embryogenic stage, then there will be fetal stage. The embryogenic stage itself, we can, that is less than 8th week. If under 10 milligrams, MNT and metformin, totally milligram, BD has to be started and continued. Target glycemic to obtain will be about 99 plus or minus 10. So that should be either you do MNT, but you should not waste your time in only in MNT because two they have to bring it down by 10th week to 110. So you have to do, we have to give metformin. The question comes, what about metformin? How can you use it? Metformin is safe as embryonic stage is over. 8th week, that's why I told you this is right here. 8th week, by the time your thing is over, embryonic stage, you can safely give uh, him this uh, metformin. I think if somebody was talking about the GDM, PCOD, they all give metformin. Now, this is, I am giving evidence here 
The evidence from the National Institute of Clinical Excellence of UK, multi-ethnic power with use of metformin as an adjunct or alternative to insulin in the preconception period and during pregnancy, when the likely benefit from improved blood glucose control outweighs the potential for harm. So that nice slide is already told in 2015 itself, but you are all breaking out head, should I give you platform, should not give you no, not at all. Now we must read properly this particular point, nice guidelines. Now, I want to share an important message here. Lately now, metformin is safe for use throughout pregnancy. How is it? In 2022, February, glucophage or metformin was approved as the first oral antidepressant medica medication to be used safely for conception to birth. Now, I think friends who are listening to my talk now, there is no fear of giving metformin because it has been clearly told the best drug to be given conception to birth. So, uh, your eth ethical committee tells them, show this reference. Metformin is safe for use throughout pregnancy. Please note this, February 22. Now, I'm coming up to the last phase of my talk, prediction is to our PPG more than 110 million. Then prevention will be 2 over PPG less than 110 million. That is 110 more is less than 110. So another thing also, administration of metformin after 12th week will not be effective in preventing GDM. So please, this point you must note. If you don't give metformin and bring down the blood sugar to less than 10 by 10th week, no point in 12th week. If you give 12th week, nothing will happen. All these women, even if you give metformin, they will not, they will all develop GDM. So giving metformin in 11th week is of no use because that's the, this again the paper published recently in randomized way. This study shows. So now finally, I am going to message, send a message, scope for prevention of GDM. What is the scope? First point, PPBS more than 10 mg and 10th week is the crucial time to a pregnancy for prediction of GDM. This is one has to remember this particular point, prediction of 10th week. So what next part will be here? Hence, intervention has to be sorted at 8th week itself if PPBS more than 110 mg because 8th week because fetal beta cell does not start in secretion, embryonic stage and metformin is safe for drug. So that, that, that means by treating by metformin by 8th week itself, if it is more under, that means no point in checking, I initially told 10th week, 10th week they will develop GDM, but how to prevent 10th week hyperglycemia? So you have to do, act much earlier, just like prepare for examination. So friends, this is a message for you all, prevention of GDM is possible if PPBS less than 10 million at 10th week as fetal beta cells won't secrete insulin which is desirable. So that, that is the message I am kind of conveying to all, all these uh, people who are listening to my talk. So message will be yes, it is necessary to optimize metabolic control early in pregnancy. This is a necessitate pre-pregnancy planning. So now I am going to conclude by saying categorization of glucose tolerance during pregnancy prediction detection. Detection is easy, you all know, know about that. Number of guidelines will be there, as I told you, DPC, IADPG, and so many countries have got to their own guidelines. But what I am going to hear is, in GDM, two or PG, we are following 140mg, DPC guidelines, future type diabetes. Now, recently we did also one, one more category, gestation glucose tolerance, two or PG, more than 120mg. And this also where as a number of papers are there, at dose penis outcome. What we are going to now will be the prediction. Early decision because of GDM, GJ, the latest classification which are we are introducing will be the early decision glucose standard at 10th week. So if you want to discuss, yes, I want to discuss saying early GGA will be the 110 million. So 110, GGA, GGA. 120 GDM 140. Even this EGGI early gestation glucose tolerance, if you are not taking care of this, will prone to develop GDM in the female and IGT in diabetes male. So that is how EGGI has become important in the professional diabetes. Now, hence I told you initially itself, 
plays king of female gender the key to death prevention it starts with a healthy pregnancy low birth weight a large for gestational age birth weight elevate risk for in adulthood life will be elevated risk for obesity diabetes hypertension and cvd this is intergeneration risk as a risk will occur so from mother the link to the ncd epidemic will continue so important message again i told you from being is female gender key to diabetes prevention as screening when at tenth week if we bring down the chance of blood sugar less than 10 mg the chance is that that women will not develop gestational diabetes mellitus if she doesn't become gdm her offspring also will not become proud so that that's why we say the home is more important than the home so it uh, friends it all starts in utero if you want to start a diabetes prevention now whereas please take care of the woman in dance and utero else so again i'm introduce introduce the statement diabetes for generation focus on the fetus for the future this is the only way to get pro diabetes if we have to take care of the pregnant woman from the early weeks even pre cancer period then probably you can avoid this the country can become a diabetes free so one blood test prevents transgenerational transmission of diabetes that is my my final message to you all i also request now here will be let us all pledge to prevent diabetes by one simple test and take care of them thank you very much